You are alive inside a cat right now, not curled up in its fur, not purring in its lap, inside, deep in the twisting labyrinth of its intestines. The walls ripple and squeeze, coated in mucus and bile. You feel every heartbeat of the animal tremble through you like distant thunder. You are not a worm. You are not a bug. You are a single cell. No face, no mouth, no eyes, and yet you are alive. But this is not where your story began. You were born in filth, not in a nest, not in warmth, not in safety. You were spilled into the world inside cat feces. Millions of you at once. Microscopic oasis. So small you could float in dust. The pile around you steamed in the air, heavy with the stench of rot. That was your cradle. And from the instant you existed, the world tried to erase you. Above, sunlight stabbed through your fragile shell, slicing DNA strand by strand until many of your siblings cracked open and died. The air dried others into brittle husks, their insides shriveled like burned leaves. Rain hammered down, drowning clusters of you in seconds. Frost came, and crystals formed inside delicate walls, splitting them open. Ants and beetles scuttled through, chewing hundreds of thousands of your brothers and sisters like crumbs of bread. Humans sprayed bleach, poured soap, dumped ammonia. Each drop of chemical erased millions at once. Cats kicked soil over their waist, grinding you into the dirt. Everywhere was death. But you were not alone. You were never alone. You were born by the millions because almost all of you would fail. Out of an ocean of brothers and sisters, only a few would ever continue. Survival was not strength. It was chance. Days passed, then weeks. You clung to blades of grass to dust in the soil, waiting, waiting for the one thing you needed most, to be swallowed. Not chosen, not wanted, not hunted, by mistake. And then it happened. A rat drank a drop of contaminated water. A pigeon pecked at a beetle that had eaten you. A human scooped a litter box, touched their mouth, rubbed their eye. You slid inside unnoticed. The stomach was not a sanctuary. It was hell. Acid boiled around you. Enzymes shredded you. The air, if you could call it that, was chemical fire. Around you, your siblings ruptured one by one. They burst like soap bubbles, dissolved in seconds. The burning chewed at you, but you forced yourself free. You cracked open your shell, dug into the gut wall, and began to divide. One became two. Two became four, four became eight, hundreds, thousands. You swarmed through tissue like wildfire, but the body noticed. White blood cells surged, surrounding you. They swallowed you whole, their enzymes chewing you into paste. Antibodies clung to your surface, marking you for destruction. Fever baked you alive. Drugs poisoned you. Most of your army was annihilated in minutes dissolved in a microscopic war. But a few slipped past. A few crawled to the most dangerous place of all, the brain. There, you insisted. You sealed yourself into neurons, forming tiny pearls of infection that could last for decades. You hid, but you were not silent. You whispered. You changed chemistry. You altered dopamine. You dulled fear. You stripped away instinct. A healthy rat flees at the scent of cat urine. Your infected rat lingered. It sniffed again. It came back. Again and again, it returned to the smell of its predator. You were pushing it, rewiring it, turning prey into bait. Imagine being inside a rat's head, not seeing through its eyes, but tugging on its instincts, bending its will, making it creep closer and closer to a cat. You could not see, but you could feel its fear fading, replaced by a compulsion you had created. You gambled everything on one outcome, that your prison would be eaten alive. But you were fragile still. 
If the rat died in a trap, you rotted with it. If a hawk swooped down and tore it apart, you were erased in the wrong predator. If the immune system surged, you were burned out of the brain. If the rat lived too long and died underground, you vanished with its corpse in the dirt. Every day was risk, every day was waiting. And then one day, success came with violence. The cat pounced, claws tore fur, teeth crushed bone, blood sprayed. The rat's skull cracked like glass, its guts spilled onto the earth. And you went with them, swallowed in blood and meat, carried into the stomach of your final host. The acid burned again, the bile churned, but this time you were where you were meant to be. Inside the cat's intestines, you finally reached your true home. Here, and only here, you could reproduce sexually. You made it invisibly, cell against cell, multiplying into millions of new oocysts. They spilled into the cat's feces, they tumbled into the world, and the cycle began again. But your triumph was an illusion. For every one of you that reached this point, billions had died in filth, burned in sunlight, shattered in frost, dissolved in bleach, chewed by insects, burned alive in stomach acid, shredded by immune cells, trapped in brains that never found cats, eaten by hawks, owls, dogs, humans, destroyed by medicine. You never saw your children, you never knew light, you never knew if you succeeded. You weren't clever, you weren't a genius, you were a slave to chance, and chance alone kept you alive. And yet, humans give you names. They call you the mind control parasite. They imagine you as an evil genius, a puppet master pulling strings. They make jokes about cat poop and mind control, as if you were clever. But the truth is darker. You are not powerful. You are desperate. You are not a mastermind. You are a prisoner. You are not a brainwasher. You are filth. So, why does it suck to be born Toxoplasma gondii? Because from the moment you exist, you are cursed. You are born in feces. You are scattered in filth, killed by heat, frost, chemicals, insects. If you survive, you are swallowed by accident. You are burned in acid, shredded by immune systems, poisoned by drugs. If you reach a brain, you gamble for years, waiting for your host to be killed by a cat. If you fail, you vanish in silence. If you succeed, you reproduce in slime and are dumped back into waste. You live unseen, you die unseen, and almost always, you die for nothing. So, the next time someone jokes about the cat poo parasite, remember this, behind the myth of mind control is a microscopic life of filth, of futility, of endless death, born unwanted, living in shadows, dying in silence. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this shocking deep dive into why it sucks to be born a Toxoplasma gondii, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and stay tuned for more jaw-dropping animal truths.